Last thing uh, I wanted to hit real quick. I don't want to talk about this a lot. Um, I know that people are kind of like um, really hurt by this thing and, and there's important work to be done out there. Um, I want our show to be a place where you can come, feel like you're in a conversation with the homies and have a good time. Um, and we don't talk about stuff like this a lot, but right now there's um, a genocide going on in the world. Uh, there's an ethnic cleansing going on. Um, with the Palestinian people. And I just wanted to kind of like highlight that, you know, anybody who feels like they're in this fight for good, uh, keep fighting. Because a lot of people, you know, when when we were in history class, when we were little kids, remember we'd like hear about Jewish people in the Holocaust. We'd hear about Native Americans and all types of other sort of um of uh, moments uh, in, in history where we're just like, oh, why didn't people just like, yeah. Tell them to stop. Yeah. yeah. Like that's literally my that thinking. That could never happen today. That would never yeah. happen today. And like, uh, and, and obviously with um, racism and segregation in the US, all this kind of stuff, we're just like, man, those people are so dumb. Like how could it happen? Whatever yeah. else, right? And right now, I think there's a lot of people that are conflicted because we're being fed that like, you know, Israel, we're supposed to support. Our president says so. Every, you know, political figure basically says that one of the main things that we as Americans believe is supporting Israel no matter what, because yeah. they're our allies and America is always right. And I think if anything we've learned after all of what happened in 2020 is that we've been, if you didn't know before, just fed the wrong information for too long. Yeah. Yeah. And we, and, and there, we shouldn't just openly trust people who are supposed to be leading us because they don't always have. And a lot of times they don't have, our best interest at heart. I'll give you guys an example. Our our governor of Maryland, Larry, uh, Larry Hogan, right? He, uh, for the most part, he's seems like a great guy. Yeah, he's he, done a lot. He's, he's done tried. a lot for Maryland, yeah. and and people like him, Democrats mm -hmm. and Republicans. Yeah. He's a Republican, but like even but Democrats amongst, like him. <laughs> Democrats yeah. like him, and, and amongst the Republicans, you know what Democrats uh, always uh, often say is that you know he's more uh, he seems to be more level headed. He didn't support Trump in a lot of uh, what he did. And, you know, for that reason, people were like, you know what? He's like a sane guy. I don't mind that, you know, he is uh, running our state. And if you don't know, like if you're not from Maryland, you don't know, like Maryland is a democratic state. So we have him as a Republican governor. Yeah. Yeah. That's dope. But um, it was, it's weird because the Muslim community in Maryland, they always with the governor and, and different uh, elected officials, they always uh, have, uh, you know, have had these groups where they invite these people to uh, dinners and iftars and make them involved and, and hear from uh, the Muslim communities and what all that they do. And Larry Hogan was one of those people. My dad helped organize so many events that like he was invited to. I did poetry at one of those events and I brought other artists there um, to, to perform and, and show their art and, and basically like support and, and let them know that, you know, the Muslim community is here. We are Marylanders, we're Americans, and we care about the state and the betterment of the state. We want to be unified and we want to do whatever we can to, you know, basically be uh, great citizens um, of this state and of this of this country. And and that's what we do. Um, and we make, uh, you know, efforts to, to uh, put all our faiths together and, and you know, be in uh, basically in unity, right? And so Larry Hogan has been a part of these events. And then like, you know, recently he posts this thing on Facebook that just totally slaps us in the back, which is just like, he says that I, you know, support Israel and I, um, you know, don't support what Hamas is doing um, and killing innocent uh, people, right? He pulled, he pulled an Obama at the White House iftar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because- Obama it seemed like it's he the was the same thing. He he launched more drone attacks um, on innocent civilians than anybody. Um, so yeah, like what what I've really like learned about this is like politicians are gonna do politics, yeah. right? Like they they earn our vote. They see us as voters. Yeah, even Yang, uh, Andrew Yang, Andrew Yang got completely just <laughs> wrecked in wrecked. person. So Andrew Yang uh, came out. He was like, I support Israel. Same, oh. similar, similar thing. And he was like, I'm for the people of New York. 
like something like that. He's running for mayor. He's running for mayor. And, and yeah, he was openly supporting Israel. Not the, the thing is like, okay, you can- I love how Bernie's Jewish and he- I'm sorry. Right, yeah. exactly. Like, he's been, and he's been on that for a long a time. Like, he's not like, oh yeah, I'm Jewish. So like, you know, got to stick up for my Israelis. He's like, yo, there's something wrong happening. I'm going to call it what it is wrong. And he's not a trendy politician no. where like a lot of people will flip their um, agenda to better serve the people that they're trying to get the vote from. He'll say Bernie's that been opinion. fighting for uh, you know racial equality and all these things before for years. Mm -hmm. he, he marched with MLK. That's yeah, and, and decades, and and that's why we don't deserve him because we, we are horrible him. people who just follow whatever somebody is he feeding is to a us. Prime example of somebody who was just too ahead of his time, right? Like we would appreciate the heck out of him in fifteen or twenty years, but and he's just like. Too old now. No, I'm just kidding. But 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 the people that you know have have worked with him, mm -hmm. uh, at least we'll get to see them play out. Yeah. AOC, yeah. Uh, Ilhan Omar, people, these people, um, who all uh, Rashida Talib, um, will have come from a lot of his yeah. sort of backing. <laughs> what Rashida Talib? She's the. Uh... It seemed I, like you had a. I, she's I, part, I, of, the, it's, she's it's, part it's, of the squad. It's not too relevant, but I'm not. I'm not a fan of her and how she. Okay, I, I have to look deeper into that. Yeah. We'll, but, we'll talk about it after the podcast. Yeah. Sure. But Andrew Yang, yeah, like he was supposed to go to an event to try to- Wasn't it Iftar? I think it was or, just some sort of community event that like he was event, supposed to yeah. work with um, some of the Bengali people um, of that community um, in New York. And then they asked him not to come anymore after he made those remarks, which was awesome on their part. But then he was like questioned about it. And then- He was walking the streets, I believe. Yeah. And then three or four people approached him and like, we're saying like, how could you tweet something like this? Like, do you not know the people of New York? There's a lot of people in these communities that are um, support, you know. The and then one of one of his campaign people like told him to back up and like not um, ask those questions, which is a horrible look for Andrew Yang. Because if he wants to be, um, you know, this guy who's for the people and he seemed like a great candidate when we when he was um, a f a first running. But yeah, like, bro, you, you want to be all about math, but then like you, you want to skip out on history lessons. You want to skip out about on math, reading. But the calculations ain't adding up. It doesn't add up, son. Yeah. Like it, and this is what people need to realize. I don't care if you're a minority. This is what people need to understand. Like who cares? Kamala Harris is half Indian, half black. I've been saying it for so, so long. Like, why are we celebrating this? If they are still killing people, if they are still yeah. with this, uh, if they're still against basic human rights and existence. Andrea, I don't care if you're Asian. Like you're making Asians look bad. A, like, the whole, representation the whole matters, but also what are you doing with your representation matters more. Yeah. I, I just want to say Paperboy the Prince from Mayor, New York. <laughs> Paperboy from uh, Atlanta? <laughs> Huh? What are you talking about? Paperboy the Prince. He's one of the uh, candidates for New York mayor. Oh, I didn't he's even know that. Why is he a rapper name? He's the dude. Who, <laughs> he, he's a rapper. No, he's from oh. DC. Like I've seen him perform a couple of times. He's a very- Does he have a shot? Buoyant, energetic- uh, the polls say no, but he's like one of the- <laughs> He's like one of those guys where you want him to be mayor for like just it's funny yeah. reasons, but legit he has like- Like the heart we over the people. We have seen what happens you know. when you elect people for funny reasons. Well, well, no, but he's actually legit. Wants just peace and love for everybody. You know, real down to earth, like good hearted yeah. dude. Um, I'm but voting for The Rock. I'm, I'm still wondering if he's being serious or not. <laughs> the but, I mean, he's, I want The, the rock, rock to be president. That'd be funny. Yeah, let's do I'm it. I'm sorry, there was there, a bigger picture here. No, 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 <laughs> but, but like it's, it, all of this is important because yeah. it tells us like where we are, where we need to go. There's people that like were fighting for the Black Lives Matter movement, but then don't re don't know how they feel about ethnic cleansing. Like it's such a yeah. weird sort of thing. And they like, only fight about this stuff when they get told to by the media. Right. It, and I mean, it's also, okay, let's also put it into perspective that it's also like a shaming thing. Like if you're not doing something, then you're mm. shamed for not doing it. So like the comparisons are like a little bit annoying because they're like, oh, if you spoke up for this and you don't, then you're X, Y, Z. It's not about that. It's a fact that you don't, you shouldn't be shamed into doing it. You should yeah. be wanting to, you know, speak up about something because it's the right thing to do. Yeah. yeah. So wait, when you're talking about that, I'm, I'm not saying, you know, you should be shamed into thinking this or that. I'm saying like, I'm, I'm followed on my social media by a lot of, you know, very um, argumentative very, people that are loud about, you know, Black Lives Matter, this and that, et cetera, et cetera. But when I post a video about Eric Garner three months before Black Lives Matter even touches it, the same people who are, who are talking about the previous thing that Black Lives Matter touched didn't touch this video at all. No likes, no replies. 
Well, yeah, once like, they're that's, told that's to. Whole, yeah, that because doesn't... because now it's people are talking about it and it's for show and like I need to participate in some Guys, way. Everything is a trend. What bothers me the most is when I can't do anything about it or I feel like I'm mm. helpless, even if mm-hmm. like, okay, yeah, post about it, sign these protests, whatever. I truly like when this is happening, like we, we, were, we had a performance and all of that. Like I feel guilty. I feel horrible yeah. because it's like, yeah, we can post about it, but like people yeah. are going through what they're going through and uh, there's nothing that I can do about it besides just support it um, in whatever way. I, I just feel too small and I hate it. Yeah, I hate yep. that feeling. It sucks because you want to be putting yourself accountable to like post about it and you know, whatever. But also we have to be able to remember that we cannot fully give ourselves mentally to these things because they do take a toll on you. And we all saw that happen last year with Black Lives Matters. There was a huge like exhaust in the world because everybody was so emotionally burnt out. And sure, you should get emotionally invested a hundred percent, but I'm over here feeling guilty for posting like funny stories, whatever. And I was like, wait, I need to like, not, I have to follow it up, but like, it's the right thing to do. But let's focus on the fact that like, let's not have this thing be a, if you're not talking about it all the time at every moment and emotionally and completely exhausting yourself, then you're wrong. But let's also not ignore it to the point where it's not causing an effect on us at all. Yeah. Right, we right, need to play yeah. that middle ground somewhere yeah, because absolutely. this whole trendiness of supporting these movements is either on one tail end or the other and there's no balance yeah. in it at all. What I've learned from last year especially was like, um, I don't want to um, post just a post. Mm-hmm. I want to do the most I can off screen. And whatever way it is, donating it to a charity or just learning, um, I want to do way more than that than I am posting or even looking at people's posts about it. Like I learn way more from off screen than people's stories. I'm sorry. Like I don't think the stories do an, an amazing job, but I think there is a need for them. Mm-hmm. Obviously, like awareness. People, awareness. Um, I think especially the amazing. basic ones that at least get the message out to people who just don't even understand what's going on. Yeah, those are great. Those yeah. are helpful. Yeah. And I think it did bring a great awareness um, in this situation. I just think like everybody also not only needs to bring awareness, but like, you know, do what you can outside, like action. I think action's super important. What I've also put put a colored picture and nothing else on Instagram. What what I've also realized is that like, the best way to um, basically, this is gonna be unfortunately something that's gonna continue to happen in our lifetimes where there's people that are being oppressed and and people that are just being done dirty. And we're gonna see this again and again. And uh, if we stopped, our tracks every single time while the people who are oppressing continue to move forward, then we're going to move ourselves back, uh, ourselves back a step every single time we do that. So in order for us to be helpful, we have to continue to use our privilege to our absolute advantage and like continue to find success and, uh, and be in positions of power and encourage people who are trying to be in those positions to uh, you know, continue doing the good work. Because if we are just like, I, I know that there's great people out there that are protesting in the streets and stuff, but I know some people personally that that's all that they do. And then they are struggling at their work and or finding a job and they're not like able to even help themselves. And that's not, that's not really healthy. able to, that's not healthy, but also it's not actually making um, much progress because at the, the end of the day- you are and the more grip that you have on your emotions, the better you can deliver your message, in my opinion. At the end of the day, the politicians are going to try to win your vote. If they want to win your vote, they have to listen to the things that you believe in. If you can be in a position where you can influence enough people to share your values and your beliefs, the whole system will change for that reason. We just have to continue to get to those positions and it's going to be difficult. I know it takes money. Of course it takes yeah, money. money. But but they how do you give get- a fuck about what we believe in? Come but on. It's on, it's on, <laughs> no, no, no. There's no. a certain set of things that like we have to be able to believe in, you know, this thing will lead to this thing. This will lead to, this will lead to that. If we only have the mindset of okay, Money is going to be the only thing that da da da. Like we're never going to be able to achieve it. We can get past that as long as we believe we can get past of it. No, past but it. that's what I'm saying. Like if you are somebody who is like, I'm able to, I can make a lot of money if I'm not focused on these things. Do you? No judgment. 
go get that money and, and, you know, like be a billionaire, whatever you want to do. But if you're going to have some sort of like influence after that, and you're able to make some sort of difference, I just think that like the world works in a way where, uh, really great people, like often aren't in those positions for a reason. And it's because we're focused on like many other things and we have a lot of like um, empathy and stuff. And it takes a lot of selfishness to be at certain positions. It just does. And so, and also it takes a lot of great relationships and like not caring about um, politics and, and choosing a side in these things. But all I know is that like, when my time is done here, I don't want to be known as somebody who didn't care. Like I, I you know, I'm going to put this on a t-shirt, but it's going to say blame the bystanders. And if there's something Ooh. that's clearly um, out there that like I don't rock with, I don't believe in, it's hurting my heart. I'm never going to keep that inside uh, because it's going to prevent me from being successful or that it's going to come in the way of my money. That's just who I am. Um, and, you know, I believe in an afterlife where, you know, uh, your your good deeds and your bad deeds are put right in front of you. And yeah, I think that like these people will eventually have to pay. They, they sacrifice themselves for this life. And we hear that all the time, like, it is what it is. What I want to say to the people that are fighting, uh, that, that feel like they are not heard and all of that, uh, it is not in anybody's best interest to support you um, that's in any sort of power for what you believe in. There's a reason that colonizers are colonizers. And if they were to, uh, you know, pick apart what somebody else was doing, they would have to reevaluate what they did. Meaning countries like the United States or the UK um, or Australia, um, you know, because they have done colonization, um, to, for them to criticize Israel would be hypocritical. And so they're not gonna do that. So don't expect it. Don't expect politicians, people who are supposed to lead you in any way, um, say something. But also don't feel like you are not heard that, that the things that you care about that you're seeing after doing enough research um, that makes sense to you, um, that they're not valid. Because if people are losing lives anywhere, um, it's wrong. And, yeah. and yeah, like don't, don't, don't give up the good fight. Free Palestine. Palestine forever. Forever, ever.